So I have built up quite a few textures within Illustrator. Right now, my spot illustration is a pretty simple structure in terms of my layers. I have my sketch underneath everything. That's layer one. I have it locked. I have my tracing or my vector, you know, line kind of uh, blob brush tracing of the rabbit on the top. And that's its own layer. Okay, so as many of you have set up your Illustrator files with your line art, you have your sketch on the bottom, and then you have your different blob brush tracings on top. Or if you, and notice that I added some to the bunny that got added, you know, onto the bird's layer. So that can happen. But as long as you can separate out your sketch and save as a clean EPS, you'll be in good shape. And I can organize them later. Now, this is the beauty of vectors. All of these little brush marks I made, some that are linear, some that are thicker, some that are thinner, right? They're all perfectly clean, no matter what size. So how can I fill up the rest of this now that I've um, pretty much made most of my textures? Well, one technique is to copy and paste from myself. So this is why we went over compositing before these, these more kind of direct imaging pro programs or processes, so that I could just steal this kind of chest texture, right? Copy it. So edit copy or command C, go on to a new layer now. This will be kind of my copy paste, or you can think of it as a clone stamp layer, but in Illustrator, where we don't have the clone stamp tool. And then I'm going to say edit, paste in place, right? And then I can use the large selection tool to move it, just that texture, right? And I can do all kinds of things with it. For instance, I can flip it over its own axis, right? I can rotate it, I can stretch it. I'm gonna flip it back because I want that curve. And I can just kind of layer it up. So once it's there, that's good. Now I can paste it again, Command V, and do the same thing. And kind of copy paste that texture. Now, what's the problem with it? Well, it's going to move it as a group each time of different marks. So as I lassoed it, it gives me more variety in, in mark making, right? So as it gets thicker there, I might like it thicker, or I might need to select it all while it's still a grouped layer and shrink it. So these are just like the compositing techniques we were using in Photoshop. We don't have warp, we don't have distort, but we have things like scale and shear. Shear is kind of like distort. You can kind of mess with things a little bit, but it's not as easy to use, unfortunately. So you have to set the shear angle and you can set it to preview it. So there you go. It's like how you italicize text, but it can help differentiate your marks. Right. And so then if I wanted to carry that again, I could take that whole mess, copy it, go to a new layer, lock the one before, edit, paste in place. Remember, I'm just making new layers to help organize them for myself. Then I can rotate it and I can shrink it, let it distort a little bit, change, and bring that texture on down. Now, is it as good as doing everything by hand? No, not necessarily but I can clean it up this way using my eraser because I have the other layers locked, right? I don't have to worry about erasing lines I wanna keep and I can bring that texture in. So those were just composited textures that I can use. Now let's continue. What about the tail? Well, I have some textures here that I might be able to use other places. All right, so let's grab a, a bunch of those with the um, lasso. Let's copy them. Let's lock that layer. Let's make a new layer on top. 
and edit paste in place. So this technique is so helpful in Illustrator for a variety of reasons, just being able to kind of edit and work with different things. Now the problem with using the lasso is if you cut in the middle of a path, you see how I have a reversed image here, right? Where it's all the, the spaces in between, because it will close the path for you with the lasso. So my answer to that is when you lasso, so I'll try it again, make sure you get more than you need. So I want to make sure I get that mark, but I have to go outside of it. I can't go inside of it. So otherwise it might fill it up for me and close the path on me. So if I get all of that and copy it and lock it and then paste it in place on this new, new layer, then you'll notice it's not all filled in, right? That's more usable. And right before I start copying and pasting it, I can start erasing away from it so that it's more useful to me because I want to use some of this in the wing, I think. So now I take that layer. I can use the large selection tool, which already gives me a transform box around it that I can rotate. It's like free transform. And I can stretch. And I can try a little bit of the fancy stuff like shear and set the angle. It's important to have shear at a, on preview here because it can do really different things. It's hard to predict it. Okay, there we go. And now that looks kind of crazy, right? That's very layered up and it's a little too dark. So what can I do? Well, what I can do is take that just that layer, and I can strategically erase away from it. I don't want to use lower transparency or anything. I just want to break it up. So there are really no shortcuts, <laughs> but you can do some internal compositing with your own vector choices. And that way I can control it and kind of break it up. I can even kind of paint in reverse, right? Paint by erasing. So my eraser is much bigger than my paintbrush. But because I have my other layers locked, it's only going to erase away from that texture I brought in. And that does help to flesh it out a little bit. Okay, so... I could keep on kind of working that way, but it would be frustrating <laughs> to say the least. So instead I'm going to consolidate my layers and merge what I need to merge while I'm in this compositing mode. So I've got these little pieces of the bird on this layer that belong to the rabbit. So what can I do? Well, I can hit command X, which will delete them, but hold them in the clipboard and then unlock the rabbit layer and then do edit, paste in place. I have to be on the layer that's unlocked. Edit, paste in place, and it will put them on the rabbit layer, right? And so that organizes them. And then what I can do is basically, instead of having to like merge them all, I can take all those texture layers and just drag and drop them into my bird layer. So you see now layer three contains layer six, five, four, and all the paths, which allows me to just keep working on them all together, erase them all together, do what I need together. I still need my sketch just for that other leg. And now I'm going to go back to the blob brush. It's a good time to save command S and my blob brush settings. I'm going to keep to what they are. And I'm just going to frantically try to finish my line work so I can get to digital coloring. Oh, that's a shaper tool. Silly me. Okay, blob brush. Here we go. Check the settings. Yep, all that looks good. All right, so I want to finish my outline. I took the accuracy back towards smooth a little bit. 
I see that I have some that I need to erase here. And because they were all put into the same layer, now I'm able to. This is some of my composited texture. The shortcut for getting black back to the blob brush from another tool is Shift B. And then a problem we often have using the blob brush is that it's not set to be the right colors, or there might be a stroke turned on for it or something. And so another shortcut I like is just to hit the I key, and that puts you to the, to the eyedropper, which will match the format of something before. And then you can do Shift B to get back to your blob brush. So you don't have to keep going to the tools window all the time. Because the use of the tool is so repetitive, it's helpful to have certain shortcuts between tools that you use a lot. And we're going to find that again in digital painting, which again, this is very similar to just the way I'm attacking this line work. Now, by having that smooth turned on slightly, it helps even out some of my strokes that might otherwise be kind of jagged, helps it be a little bit more organic looking. Now, let's finish these talons. I'm barely pressing at all. That's something you get uh, better with at practice in digital art is just such a light touch. Because the lighter your touch can be, the more sensitive your brush can be. And technology can help with that a little bit. The ultimate kind of... Uh, drawing tablet tools or Cintiqs, which is a pressure-sensitive screen instead of a pressure-sensitive stylus. And so with that, you can use whatever kind of tools you want. You could use your number seven Sable Winsor Newton brush for inking and be able to be that precise with your pressure amount. But the cheaper the tablets, the more affordable the, you sacrifice in the, the pressure sensitivity. So you just have to build it up in your own reflexes, your own hands and fingers. All right, I'm going to use some more uh, cross contour in the feet, in the talons, but I'm switching to a smaller brush. Kind of build these up, these tones, because my idea is that this bird is very filled in, whereas the, the rabbit will be pretty empty, so that the coloring works pretty differently on both. Contrast them, kind of yin and yang. And by zooming out, you can go a little bit faster. So don't get too stuck in details if you can help it. I'm going for a kind of naturalist uh, representational style here. So it's okay if I break my outline with some stray little feather quill marks. Lots of different types of illustration. This is more scientific. Trying to match observation of the real thing, of the real textures. Oh, computers having a little bit of trouble keeping up with my strokes, so I'm going to save it. <clears throat> 